Live from Las Vegas, Nevada, it's The Cube at IBM Interconnect 2015. Brought to you by headline sponsor, IBM. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are live in Las Vegas for theCUBE, our flagship program, where we go out to the events and extract the signals from the noise. I'm John Furrier with SiliconANGLE, my co-host Dave Vellante, Chief Research at Wikibon. Um, we are live at the Go Social, Social Media Lounge, where interconnectgo.com is the website you want to go to for the digital experience, powered by CrowdChat, powered by the CrowdChat platform, VIP influencers, all the amazing crowd activity, all the people on Twitter, all the data is out there. Certainly the analysts will be coming shortly. And our next guest is Inhi Chusa, the VP of Strategy and Business Development for IBM Analytics. Welcome back, great to see you. You look marvelous, you. as usual. Thank you, thank um, you, John and Dave. So you're um, doing a lot of meetings, three shows into one. So yeah. three times more customer meetings, <laughs> three times more activity. How are you feeling? Three times the fun. <laughs> Three times the fun. Aerosmith, I mean, we're going to be Aerosmith. rocking tonight. I oh, can't yeah, wait. Oh yeah, that's a great concert. I'm so excited. what's going on? Give us the update what's happening in the show um, for you. We've got a number of things. Uh, let's start with some of the cloud announcements. We have a number of uh, focus around cloud data services and new capabilities that we want to bring to market. We have also have uh, new capabilities in terms of um, uh, Twitter actually flowing through our Big Insights Hadoop service in the cloud on BlueMix. Uh, We've got also a higher level um, partnership announcement. I don't know if uh, folks have had the opportunity to read about this yesterday, but we um, forged a, a strategic partnership uh, with Juniper. And this is all around transforming the way uh, CSPs can actually perform and operate and begin to improve the level of personalized services, uh, CSPs meaning communication service providers in the industry, um, by embedding analytics actually directly into the Juniper um, Service Gateway network, right? Uh, sure. it, it, that's, that's exciting, that's so really exciting. So break down the analytics thing. So IBM has, mm -hmm. you have a software group now, it's kind of sprinkled, software's eating IBM right now in all different groups. You have different uh, divisions now. So the software division's gone, and you have, you're the, in the analytics division. Yeah. There's a Watson division. Yeah. Um, can you explain like what your focus is in your group? And, and the, the trend of analytics is embedded everywhere. You see System Z talking about in processor analytics, analytics in different engines. Is that your group, or has it all? So before you get, so the highest level, Ginny flattened the organization, right? Yeah. Absolutely, I mean, it's about it's just, speed, yeah, yeah okay. that's a key element of it. And the other is to actually orient the way the market's oriented. Um, what clients actually care about is being able to get to whatever business outcome that they want. And in order to do that, you're going to need a combination of software technology capabilities. You're going to need um, uh, services and consulting, and you're going to need um, real deep domain and or industry understanding of applying that technology and delivery in the context of whatever solution you're solving for, whether it's you know energy and remediation of disasters, or if it's a predictive maintenance and quality within um, uh, aerospace engineering, or whether it's fraud detection and AML within risk and financial crime, or it, it's the combination, almost whether you talk about cloud, you talk about commerce, you talk about analytics, clients are going to want to be able to apply those kind of layers of the technology, the data, the um, the analytics, as well as as well as the domain expertise in context. Okay, so so tie that back to John's question: the organization, specifically the analytics group. Yep. So what's in there? Sure. So we have um, uh, Bob Picciano as our senior vice president and leader for IBM Analytics, and within IBM Analytics, we have a team that's focused on uh, horizontal platform capabilities. What I mean by analytics platform and horizontal is they think about the entire information the analytics stack of uh, technology, such as the relational database, such as warehousing, such as BI, intel business intelligence and reporting. So think about uh, our capabilities around Cognos or SPSS. Um, uh, they felt focus on, also the team focuses on Hadoop, right? Emerging technologies in terms of new types of analytics and new analytic applications and programming models, including innovations that we want to do and accelerate around Spark. Um, we also have uh, folks on that team uh, focus around stream computing as um, uh, uh, capabilities around real-time stream processing. But the, the notion of this platform is really about all the horizontal capabilities that you can imagine 
There's also another layer above it which we call cloud data services, which is what are the set of uh, uh, data and analytic services that you want to be able to expose and compose in the cloud. Um, and this is to accelerate new types of application development, um, as well as much more of a self-service so environment, a right? Layer for the cloud. That's right. APIs. For uh, yeah, all around data and analytics. So it may be things like Cloudant is part of that set of capabilities. Yeah. The Big Insights Hadoop yeah, yeah. Um, and BlueMix, DataWorks. That that's all exposing that next layer of data services in the cloud. And that lives within Bob's group. That's also in Bob's group. Then there's a layer called um, analytic solutions, and the analytic solutions are things like um, predictive maintenance and quality, or PCI around customer insight for certain uh, vertical uh, applications and industry solutions. The Now Factory, which is um, a set of capabilities around telco analytics for customer service providers, network operators. Uh, so uh, the solutions team really thinks about a vertical orientation of uh, the data and analytics stack to apply to different roles and professions and industries. Okay. And that's how Bob's that kind of sense. organization okay. and, and is And you've got services yeah. within that that, absolutely. And uh, industry specific services as well? Or that's anything right. that's data related? Both, both. It's it's um, the professional experts that we have on the team are a combination of the consulting experts within GBS's consulting practice that have uh, moved into the IBM Analytics unit mm -hmm. that are going to be specialized by vertical industry. So we'll have uh, a team that are experts around financial services and then in banking, is it core banking, is it retail banking, commercial, um, insurance, personal casualty, property, energy, utilities, management, travel, transportation. So you can imagine kind of yeah. the way that the deep domain experts are, are, are aligned. And, and you said database is in there as well? Yeah, database is part of our platform set of that's capabilities. Stack, so if you think, letter. that's part of the technology yeah. level. So, so um, DB2 lives in? In the, IBM the, Analytics. The yeah, SPSS? IBM Analytics, yeah, SPSS, SPSS sure. lives in it. Right. It's okay. all things having to do with data and analytics, essentially. So you get the wow, technology, you get the technology responsibility. Big, and it's growing, too. And it's growing. Last quarter grew, I think 6% was the number? 7%, 7 yeah. 7% huge. So huge how does that, how does that uh, so you got technology, you got the enabling with the cloud fabric yeah. kind of inter interface, and then you get the vertical and the solutions group, so solutions. That's how right. How does that relate to the Watson team? What do they do? That's a great question. So part of what uh, we want to also enable within Watson is how you begin to compose different aspects of the technologies in such a way that you develop Watson cognitive applications. Within the Watson unit, we're really engaged at deeper levels of transforming and providing kind of next generation of, of cognitive applied to the domains of um, uh, insurance, domains of medicine, domains of wealth management. So like you, recipes of like, like uh, technology that are, that are applied, almost applied at analytics. Well, in yeah, and there's kind of a couple phases of it. One is you have to have enough data and information, yeah. both structured and unstructured, right, that you're curating, meaning there's got to be evidence from which you're actually asking questions. And a key element of Watson is the ability to ask it very rich questions and, and to inter interact in a very human way. Um, via natural language, but also uh, the inferencing capabilities and, and, and the other aspects within the engine itself. And so I, I would look at clients um, really trying to get their data in order, um, their analytics, who their audiences are, their domain experts, and, and we're really helping clients regardless of where they are in their journey. And I, I look at it as an entire journey for everybody. Okay, and now you're doing, Doing partnerships, doing deals, the Juniper announcement. Can we talk about yeah. that a little bit? Because yeah. you know, we're talking off air a bit. I don't think people really understand it. So take us through what it exactly it is and why, why it's so important. Sure. Um, I, I'm excited to share it, uh, actually, because my new role is to, act, is to run strategy and business development for the analytics unit as a whole, reporting to Bob. And uh, the first partnership we've announced this year is with Juniper. And uh, just, just very candidly, you know, if you step back and you think about the world, there are just natural points of what I consider centers of where a lot of data either resides or is throughputting, right? And the network is one of them. And what's amazing about that is that uh, Juniper is uniquely positioned to extract as much data at the network level than any other um, of its uh, contemporary kind of uh, companies. Now, what IBM has to bring to bear is the ability to augment that data and understanding, knowing what's actually happening in that data flow 
what applications are running through it. So we're embedding some of our unique capabilities from the Now Factory actually inherently in the network router for Juniper to be able to augment that data with key metrics that can help things like uh, bottlenecks of latency, performance, optimization, as well as things like uh, customer service. Because then as you think through understanding that data and processing it, you can then visualize that information in a way that if I'm the network operator, I can begin to change um, in real time and see you know, different types of application usage and different types of customer se uh, service usage. I mean, I'll just give you a simple personal example. When I'm at home and my kids are streaming something, <laughs> right, either on Netflix or YouTube <laughs> or you know, you know name, name the video they prefer, and you know, my husband Dave's on, on his business application, I may be on my system, all of a sudden you, you, can, you can feel <laughs> right, the latency on the system. Well, as part of it is because the network's not smart enough to know what's the combination that's being used by the various subscribers in the home. This, this is an opportunity for us to actually unpack that knowledge in such a unique way to improve the quality of the experience. Well, quality of service too. Networks are the bottleneck and with peering, you see Google has their own peering network for their cloud. Yeah. You got to get down and push into the network. So talk about the deal. Is it a joint business, go yeah, market? It's a, it's technology a, development, sharing? It's a strategic deal to, and what we plan to do is um, innovate around the engineering. So joint we, engineering. It, so there is a joint engineering involved. There's also joint go-to-market involved because as we go into both the um, uh, communication service provider marketplace as well as to even large enterprises, there are a lot of large enterprises that you know, procure their own networks and manage them themselves, especially in financial institutions, as a mm -hmm. good example. Um, of course, they get the, uh, the, the network service potentially from one of the carriers, but they actually manage the internal um, uh, policies, let's say. They want that level of visibility, which they haven't had before. And this is a unique opportunity for us to be able to bring um, IBM's breadth and depth of analytics to uh, what Cisco, uh, uh, excuse me, what Juniper has really in this particular scenario of exposing the data in such a unique way that we can help them scale what they're doing. Well, since you mentioned it, is it an exclusive <laughs> deal? <laughs> yeah, I, I, I was anticipating where was your, question, anyway. your question was <laughs> you going and I, I, could, I could see your face well, and so that's why I started but, to mention it. So why Juniper? I mean, oh, well, one why, of the key things. Cisco? One of the key things um, in terms of the partnership is um, that it's not exclusive. However, what we want to do is be very thoughtful and strategic because it's truly a first of a kind. Neither of us have innovated this particular way in the industry um, in terms of any, uh, let's say, uh, leading um, analytics company or a leading networking company. The second piece is, is all of the data that um, uh, Juniper is able to expose in their network is, is pretty amazing. What we're doing is um, applying KPIs and metrics and, and knowledge and algorithms and mathematics in a very unique way so that they can now automate things like and remediate through predictive understanding of bottlenecks and throughput, latency, performance. And, and, and Juniper's focus on CSPs is a sort of a natural place to, yeah, to start. It's yeah. probably easier to focus and smaller company. A absolutely, and, yeah. this, and okay. this is really a partnership where you're bringing kind of two very um, uh, innovative companies um, that have had actually had a very long-standing partnership for a while uh, in different ways to reinvent what's possible moving forward in this particular space. And by the way, this is one of um, a couple elements of IBM strategy. I mean, we announced the partnership with Twitter in the October timeframe because this was about extracting the insights from the social conversations and the pulse of what every individual citizen professional is thinking and doing in a very meaningful way to impact business decision making. When you think about here at, in the CSP scenario, here we wanted to get close to understanding the data that's flowing through the network. So you're going to see from IBM um, a number of kind of uh, strategic sort of developments and relationships that accelerate our ability to allow clients to extract the insight from the data. How far along are you with, that, with the Twitter partnership? Can you expand on where you guys are with that? Yeah. Is it prototype? Is, it, is there actually solutions in the marketplace? Is it just kind of tinkering around? And There's us, you know we love the Twitter data. You know our, our, our love for Twitter data. So we're <laughs> curious. You, you are uh, avid users, uh, uh, I can vouch. Um, so, uh, groupies. The, the <laughs> groupies. Yeah, we work for Twitter, but we don't get paid. <laughs> Twitter, if you're watching, you know, that's okay. We'll groupies, pump you up. That's funny. Uh, Snapchat's so <laughs> on their tail. You know, Snapchat's yeah. growth is 
phenomenal. So yeah. anyway, back to Twitter. So where are you with the Twitter? Because there's so, good buzz around the show here on the, this one point. The partnership is doing great. And what we've really done um, in the last, uh, since the October announced, end of October is when we announced it is, um, actually developed a whole series of internal training for our global consulting organization because we've um, declared to the market that we're going to uh, train you know thousands of uh, 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 consultants around the use of Twitter data and certifying them in very unique ways um, on delivering Twitter within a business context. So that training is actually started in the middle of December. That's for the insight piece too, right? Getting and that's insight. really for the insight piece. There's another level which is flowing Twitter data naturally through IBM Analytics software capabilities like uh, Watson Analytics, like Big Insights for Hadoop. So th those set of capabilities, we've already enabled the Big Insights for Hadoop on the cloud. Um, the Watson Analytics is uh, forthcoming very quickly, so you'll be able to see that. Uh, and and we've actually enabled uh, uh, Twitter also within our Bluemix environment for application development. So there's a number of things that we want to accelerate around what I consider um, the ability to play, innovate, build, kind of new services, new applications, new insights using Twitter. Then there's a whole um, set of solutions, and our, our intent is to actually announce um, a set of integrated solutions with Twitter starting in second quarter. So you're going to have to wait to hear a little bit more on so that. So they're engaged with you guys. This is oh, not like Twitter yeah. doing a, hey, you guys are using our fire hose. Oh, no, you no. Have we have dedicated, we, we have engineering relationships. We actually have joint um, uh, consulting and expertise relationships. We actually have regular uh, committees in terms of the technology and business and client engagement. We have a number of clients actually that have also done uh, POC engagements and, and really want uh, actually bigger uh, <laughs> solutions. Um, if anything, exciting. they want faster. It's super so exciting. I got to ask you, yeah. so two years ago we were at the Tableau conference interviewing Nate Silver, and you were oh, there. Oh, yeah. But, and so we, we, you know, us on Twitter, we were like crazy about it. So we were poking at him, asking him about Twitter and its predictive capabilities, and he made the statement, again, two years ago, the data's not there. The data doesn't exist. And so we were like, very, guess it does, he's wrong. <laughs> he's a hardcore statistician. Now maybe he's right in that kind of structured he's an, framework. He's, a, he's right? not even a data scientist. He's just more of a, a user. Yeah. But so it's 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 two years <laughs> on. We're, you we're got this. You got to you know, bringing your resources to bear. This the corpus of data is enormous. Is the data there? Is it starting to be be there? Um, that's not to, a, that's not to pit you against <laughs> Nate, but I'll give you the. It's two years on, so things that could have changed. But I mean, what do you think? Is it just? different type of data? I mean, I know it's not structured surveys from you know, political polls. Yes, or yes. Or predictions on, you know, whatever, who's going to win the election. You know, the value of the data is always in context, and having that as a social element in terms of how that conversation is happening at a certain time, certain frame, is really important yeah. as an element. It might not always be the element, but it's actually one of a combination. It's been pretty consistent for us, and I've seen it. I believe we're really entering what we call kind of an inside economy. And in an inside economy, you're going to have to marry data sets from a variety of different sources, including your own internal enterprise organization data, but it may be things like combining social data with other types of industry data, even government open data to marry, to extract a higher level of, of understanding, whether it's around a customer, whether it's an, around um, a, an organization, whether it's around a set of products. Um, I would say a different way is that the size and the conversations that actually happen on Twitter are as close to sensing what the pulse of the planet is, and that's kind of what we talk about. And there are very few places in the world that represent the corpus of human thought, and this is one of them. This is almost one of the most modern day, and you get the most uh, um, uh, extremes of the mundane. Signal. It's human signal. Right, absolutely, mundane to uh, absolutely insightful in that pool, and it's how do you find that one right. needle in the haystack, and we have the analytic capabilities yeah. to do that, and to do that, tying back to key business process and workflow. It's really genius, I got to say, and you guys, this is such a great move for you guys. We love it. Oh. 100%, I think it's the future, you nailed it. Double down, keep rolling. But I got to ask you, okay. Internet of Things yeah. is oh, big yeah. data. The Twitter example means Internet of Things, people are things. I mean, thing one, thing two is a cartoon, a book. So, I got things on the edge of the network. Talk about the edge of the network. Probes on sensors, it could be refrigerators, whatever it is, oil refineries, every yeah. vertical's got things. Machines and absolutely. people. Absolutely, absolutely. So the people is the Twitter thing. That's an Internet of Things application, get that. 
machines and probes and that market, what does that look for you guys? Is Bluemix is hot, you're seeing Bluemix big data and internet of things are the top conversations at this show right now. Yeah, and uh, you probably saw the main tent stage yesterday afternoon, um, and uh, the Silverhook power boats. And, yeah, they were on theCUBE. Uh, awesome, excellent. one of our favorite interviews. <laughs> <laughs> Their business so, outcome is pretty specific. Win the race. Win the race. <laughs> yeah. Win the race. And, win the race. and live through it. A lot of, and live through it. A lot of sensors. A really good um, uh, example, actually, is work that we did recently with uh, Pratt and Whitney. W uh, you know, developing and innovating around. They they are the market leader around um, uh, uh, airline engines, right? And in that manufacturing and engineering uh, space, one of the key elements is how they've been innovated their engines for fuel efficiency and economy. One of the things that they thought they were going to be able to save because of, of, of the optimization in the engineering was on fuel, but however, they also had a lot of unexpected uh, downtime around the product in terms of some of the quality, and they, they didn't understand why. One of the unique challenges they gave um, us was, uh, you know, could we help them determine and predict what was likely to happen. So they had actually captured about two years worth of data and they gave us 18 months of it and asked us to predict what was going to happen in the remaining six months. And we did, our team actually applied some of our predictive maintenance of quality and asset optimization capabilities all built off of a combination of our IBM analytics portfolio like SPSS and other elements. Um, we did a pattern detection and understanding and we actually predicted with 90, uh, uh, close to 98% accuracy on what was going to happen in the next six months, which was the truth. I mean, it was that close to what they actually saw in the data. Now, now did that lead to some kind of business capability? Or it did, solution? it actually um, transformed the way they thought about servicing and the follow-on new innovations that they could actually offer to their downstream ecosystem partners. I mean, the opportunity around the internet of things is un, uh, just unparalleled because what people care about is um, not only just the connectedness of everything, as well as the security around everything, but it's how do you extract the inside of things, right? The inside of the connected things. It's not just the internet of things themselves. Can we talk about, we, you and I were in it, uh, the Duke World, Strata, yeah. Big Data SV <laughs> last week. Well, all these guys were, and, and the big talk was, well, one of the big themes was ODP. Yeah. Um, big announcement. Um, Mike Olson put out a blog post saying, oh, it's all hooey. Um, Hortonworks and others, you guys responded saying, no, it's not hooey, it's, it's real. Why does the world need an open data platform? Oh, you know, it's, it's part of um, what I consider being able to help accelerate true enterprise adoption at large scale. And the reason for that is you have to have certain degrees of standardization in order for, for clients to be able to extract value out of that data, reuse that for new application development, and having a partnership around the community ensures that consistency to protect actually uh, the investments by, uh, most importantly, many of the clients as well as the application programmers that are that are working in the in the industry. That's a key element of it. So, I mean, on the one hand, Mike was sort of criticizing, and we know Mike really well. He's a friend, and he's a great guy, and a straight shooter. He was criticizing sort of the, the pay to play aspect of it, and that, that's not so much of a concern. You know, it's not it's really open, Hortonworks. Gotta, gotta, right, it's it. competitive with Hortonworks, but <laughs> but the but the but the the point he does make, which I'm. I'm I'm sort of torn on this. I'm really trying to understand is, why do we need standards when we have standards with Apache? We've already got open standards. Why do we need more standards? You do have um, open standards with Apache. It's, it's also about actually, I would say one of the most important things to clients is they want some headlights into certain directions. So if the community knows architecturally, even if, if, if the base has to go in a certain direction and can give a little bit of headlight, Enterprises can actually invest properly in that and understand how they have to, where they want to emphasize in terms of certain branches or forks in, in terms of the project. Because, uh, you know, Hadoop, unlike some of the other open source projects within Apache, it has multiple, <laughs> multiple branches, right? There's a number of initiatives under that. And it's very hard for a single uh, uh, enterprise to be able to be on track and on top of every layer. Of, of all of the initiatives in a meaningful way, with, unless you're a really large institution and you have you know, thousands of application programmers and developers and right. data architects, then you're, you're in a business where that's the core of what you do and that's why you've got so there's that. A purist. But there's, so you're there's purist, a purist folks and then, that really can't afford so that. So you're saying there's yeah. purists and speed, people who can handle the purest nature and the speed, and the slower, which is like built around investment protection, where you slow roll the open core. Well, I would actually say skill. Skill is probably one of the 
quite honestly, I think the Hadoop market should be a heck of a lot bigger than what it is right now. Well, I was going to say. So you can't <laughs> scale something if there's not a lot of standards in terms of how people can actually drive the next level of innovation, whether it's doing in-system analytics and applying R because it's much more pervasive in a broad scenario. Yeah. You, you can imagine what's going to happen with Yarn and Spark. You can imagine what's going to happen right. in the SQL space. You can imagine what's going to happen in terms of text analytics and machine learning. So it's, so do you it's think, going to explode. It's, yeah, it's actually yeah, yeah. going to be faster. So do you think then that there, yeah. the, has not developed fast enough. I mean, Hadoop I should be much bigger, it you're should. saying. And well, it's not because there's, you know, it's a lot to track well, if it's not standard. Well, you must laugh when you do the analyst thing, and all we talk about is Hadoop, 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 <laughs> and Hortonworks goes public, and it's got, I don't know, 12 million, 30 they, they did 12 million, million. they did 12 million, million last quarter. Million. <laughs> if you look at IBM's business, it's, it's yeah. enormous, comparatively. Yeah. Why is it that we talk about Hadoop so much? Because the innovation it started it all, right? I mean, it started the whole meme, I guess, but you it's know, fun. You know what's, um, but it also, uh, uh, the thing that I really um, am most excited about it is the fact that it allows new types of discovery-based applications, mm. right? In traditional um, uh, warehouse analytic systems, it, it was questions and you get an answer. Right, here's the question I wanted to ask. What's my sales for the month? Who are my most profitable customers? It, using technologies like Hadoop mixed with search and mixed with text analytics, you actually allow people and organizations to ask much more reflective and discovery questions. You're not just asking a question for an answer, you're actually kind of playing with it and maybe trying to find out relationships you didn't expect. That's kind of the new class of applications that's possible and that's what's so exciting. So talk about the, um the next phase of growth for okay. your group. Obviously, you're going to set the table. You yeah. and Bob are, are going to attack the analytics part of the division, which is the, the core stuff. Um, you're also the buyer out there for startups. You guys are, you know, are the customers of the VCs we interviewed. I mean, Ping Lee, Frank Hartali on our big data panel, and I asked them, IBM and others are the buyers for you guys as the VCs. You're peddling up the startups, um, the ones that can't make it, that, you know, so, but they have yeah. some technology, AccuHire potentials, portfolio, product portfolio, white spaces. What, what's your view on that? Can you share? I mean, obviously you can't tell the plan, but you're doing strategy, you're doing biz dev, you're doing That's deals. Right. What's the M&A outlook look like for you guys? Um, I think it looks uh, positive. I think the industry looks positive in general. If you look at the activities and just kind of the signals of what happened last year in terms of just overall market, VC investment yeah. in the space, um, has grown, but uh, it, for, for us it's positive because what's nice about the way we're aligned to be um, uh, enabling the, the solutions and the markets we want to go after, like IBM Analytics, IBM Commerce, um, IBM Security, is that we can actually move faster in, and yeah. thoughtful about, well, thoughtful about what are really the components that actually drive accelerated new growth new skills growth, new application growth, new technology growth, and prioritization. It makes it much, um, it's, it goes back to the so do you speed have a list? at which. Do you have a list? So huh? do you have a list? I'd love to shop. <laughs> <laughs> who doesn't, love, who doesn't right, like to shop? How big shopping? is the list? I mean, is it like this? I mean, is it long? Come on. Like, yeah. <laughs> have you seen my closet? <laughs> <laughs> we got some things for you. We'll talk after. No, but m and is big I'm right kidding. now. You're going to see, well, our thesis was consolidation, certainly in big data. Yeah. You know, there was databases down to three. You now, know, I yeah. wouldn't say the word consolidation, though, because um, that's not actually the lens through which I think about it. I actually think about it as, what are the classes of applications and technologies that we actually think are going to be innovating and driving growth in various industries. And so I'm actually not thinking about it from a consolidation okay, standpoint, from a but standpoint, really, from a really uh, Well, standpoint. there's going to be acquisitions, and, and there's going to be you know, fewer companies maybe in some category, but the, you're right, there's another wave coming. I think there of, is, of, and it's hard to tell. Maybe it's you know. IoT. Well, new apps. Yeah. The, this, this, well, we, this is the speculation we've been we've been covering is that we get the big boys that have overfunded the VCs, the startups. Yeah. You guys have a partnership strategy. We talked with Doug and we talked with um, the folks in, in the Blue Mix group. It's a collaboration space now for like yeah. if you're under 50 million and you're not generating sales. If you're a startup, and you have no sales but a product. The question is how fast can I get sales? The VCs aren't funding B and C rounds because there's no sales. So like they're a perfect like stuck in the middle of of things. 
perfect opportunity to put them in the marketplace or it, some... It's got to, you know, I have to go back to, it's got to align to wherever our strategic priorities are and where we think the innovation is going to happen next. And quite honestly, I'd like to for us to be able to innovate as much within IBM um, because we spend a tremendous amount uh, around uh, innovations, internal innovations as well that we want to expose. Um, our research assets are, are pretty amazing. So uh, it, we're very thoughtful about what are kind of the adjacent spaces that are natural kind of accelerants to our business. Okay, we're getting the hook here. Thanks for coming on theCUBE. Final word for you, what's the vibe of the show? Um, what do you think about your new role in doing deals? Um, <laughs> and just in general, the pulse of, oh. of the analytics group. Well, first of all, Interconnect is great. I mean, this is probably uh, just massive in terms of the attendance and the mm. facilities and all of the topics, mobile, cloud, security, DevOps. I mean, you, you, you've got the gamut, analytics. Uh, so really excited, um, obviously IBM Analytics, huge, huge opportunity for us to transform every profession, every role, um, every industry. And, and for me personally, I'm really honored and, and um, excited to be part of this team, so. Well, we're honored to have you on theCUBE and it's so great to chat with you. You're always awesome to, to share information. You're very candid uh, and open. Thanks for taking the time out of your busy schedule. To, to share with us, appreciate it. This is theCUBE, we'll be right back with our next guest after this short break. I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante. We are here live at interconnectgo.com, interconnect conference here in Las Vegas. We'll be right back.